Well, welcome. Uh, this is a new feature we're trying out for uh, the uh, On the Economy blog, which I host. I'm Jared Bernstein. And I'm here today with my friend and colleague, uh, Chuck Marr, who's the Director of Federal Tax Policy uh, here at the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities. And Chuck and I and others have been blogging a lot about this issue of tax repatriation. But I have such good conversations with this guy about this topic uh, in the hallways and by the water cooler that I thought it'd be fun to try to do a, 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 an interview uh, on, on video here. So, so let's let it rip and see how it works. Um, Chuck, could you start by just describing what this policy of tax repatriation is and why it's uh, 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 heated up right now? Sure, Jared. It's a, it's a big deal right now in Washington. You have a massive lobbying campaign going on. You're spending millions and millions of dollars because there's lots of money at stake. And basically the issue is you do have a lot of U.S. multinationals who over the years have made a lot of profits overseas. So a multinational is specifically a, what? A large corporation that's headquartered in the United States that does business in the United States but also outside of the United States. Mm -hmm. So. You know, your household GE. names, GE, Procter & Gamble, Coca-Cola, a lot of the high-tech firms. Mm -hmm. And so the policy enables them to do what? The, the way the tax, I think what viewers really need to understand about the tax code is the, the corporate tax code works very differently for domestic profits as compared to foreign profits. Okay. So if a multinational or any U.S., you know, a small business or any domestic firm makes money in the United States, say they invest in Michigan, right? They hire some people, they make some money, they pay corporate taxes immediately in that year. Mm -hmm. Whereas if they invest overseas and make money, they get you actually taxes are kind of voluntary. <laughs> they, they, if they bring them home... That sounds like a problem yes. right off the bat. If they, if they bring the taxes back to the United States, they pay the regular tax rate. Mm -hmm. But if they keep them abroad, they actually don't pay taxes. So you only pay this tax really like it's a toll charge coming back. Coming back. And so you have this great incentive for companies to build up a lot of profits overseas because of that tax advantage. Now you can just hold, if you're GE, multinational, you've got a factory in Italy or something, whatever earnings you can make there, you can just hold as long as you want basically? Exactly. So you don't pay U.S. tax. You may, you may pay tax in that foreign country, right? Depends on what their tax rates are. But a lot of you find is that they obviously park this money in very low tax countries, a lot of tax havens, countries like the Cayman Islands, the Irelands of the okay. world. And so they don't pay tax here until they bring it home. So why would we or somebody come up with an idea to let them bring it home at a much reduced rate? What they have done, and they did it, they actually got away with it. They did it in 2004. They is being? The, 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 the business community uh -huh. ran a major campaign in 2004. What they tend to do is they wait for an opportunity. So when the economy is really weak and policymakers are just scrambling around, and what can we do to help? They say, oh, we're here to help you because we've got, here's, we got a trillion bucks, and we want to bring it home. That's right? how but, much we're talking about, yeah, right? Yeah, so they, you know, they wave the flag a little bit, and they say, you know, we have this money overseas, and we'd like to bring it home, and it would just be good for the United States. And okay. so it has a sort of a, you know, on the surface, a cursory appeal to it. Well, let's talk about that cursory appeal for a second, because I agree with you. I mean, if you don't know as much as uh, about sort of the history of this, probably it does sound kind of reasonable. Is that there's there's over a trillion dollars deferred or stuck over there, and this repatriation idea sounds like it's an idea to kind of blast it out, bring it back home at a time when we need it. Why is that wrong? Yeah, exactly. I think the problem is, and, and the problem is the, the lobbying campaign, I think when they go meet with senators, representatives, they never get to the second part. But there's almost like a, a pretense that the world would end today, after, or right after this happened. And the problem with the, with the logic of this is that if you do this, what you've just done is an invitation for companies in the future to ship more and more investments and profits overseas. Because think about what's happened. They've made profits overseas, they hold them to a recession, and they get this bargain basement tax rate. Whereas if they invest in Michigan, they pay 35%. If they invest overseas, they come back and they wait a few years and they pay 5%. And corporations, I mean, they're smarter than, I mean, a dog could figure this out, but they're smarter than that, right? What do they do? You've created incentive. You told them, okay, every time in the United States when there's 10 million people unemployed, you're going to get a bargain basement rate. So what do they do? Well, we shift jobs and investment overseas and we wait. So we've tried this before. 
has it helped in terms of investment in jobs? Because again, I mean, it is, right. I take your point, yeah. but it is intuitive that, you know, we, uh, we might be bringing it back at a much reduced rate. It's bad for the treasury. But like bottom line, we need jobs. Will this right, help? Right, right. And if it had worked, you could at least make a case for it. You know, the problem is exactly. we did it once before and it was just a failure, right? Everybody, you had academic studies one after the other and say, no significant job creation, no increased domestic investment, no research and development uh, expansion, mm -hmm. right? All the survey of the literature, the congressional research, the joint tax, the treasury across the board says failure. But it, Jared, it was worse than that. And I was, worked on the Hill at the time. It, it was beyond failure. It was a, an embarrassing failure because you had members of Congress, they all sort of, you know, they went along with it for one time. They tried it. But then within weeks, the companies had lobbied the hardest. All of a sudden, they started coming out with these announcements. Hewlett Packard was really one of the key, the key companies in the coalition. Hewlett Packard repatriates 14 million. Hewlett Packard announces 14,500 job loss, wow. right? Pfizer, the biggest repatriator, quickly becomes behind. Hewlett Packard announces 10,000 layoffs. I see. And so, so, so what happened was, you know, it just didn't create jobs. So, so that's that's what you meant by embarrassing. I think I yeah. don't know that I quite understood that. It's not just that they didn't create jobs; it's that some of the biggest repatriators actually laid people laid off. people off, and they were the ones. So here they are on Capitol Hill making this big case, making all these promises, and then within months, all of a sudden, they got the money, and then there go the jobs. Right. And so it really was it really was a failure. And I think the problem is that whether it's because members are you know some transition new people, uh, you know. It, it, circumstance where they're more desperate now but you know the companies are back again and they're just very aggressive and they're trying to say well you know didn't work great last time but we're going to do better we need more jobs right we need to love you talked about we need to build schools we need to build roads we need to build bridges and businesses need customers that means we need to make sure the paychecks of people through tax cuts or, or different means need to be larger what we don't need is to create more incentive for jobs to leave the united states that's the last thing and unfortunately this is what the business community is pushing all right. Thank you, Chuck Marr.